Well, let's go to Seoul now and speak to Dr. Moon Chung In, special advisor to the South Korean President Moon uh, Jae In. Thanks very much for coming on the programme. Thank you. So let's start with those issues that uh, we were just heard about there in John's report. That relationship between China and the US, Donald Trump and his approach to China. What impact do you think that's had, uh, not only on China, but other countries in the region? South Korea will be in a very, very difficult position because we cannot make a choice between Beijing and Washington. The U.S. is our number one ally, while China is a very important strategic cooperative partner. Therefore, we want that Beijing and Washington go together and to resolve the differences in a more harmonious way. We are not in a position to make a choice between the two. It so in, 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 that case, in, that case, in that case, if Joe Biden won the election, would that put you in an easier position? Joe Biden will be tough on China, uh, like uh, Trump, but uh, he'll be much more, he'll be pursuing much more civilized approach to China. Uh, and I think that he'll be in full consultation with uh, each, uh, his allies. Therefore, we believe that uh, we can come up with much, you know, a better consultative you know, channel with uh, the Joe Biden. So you're supporting a Joe Biden victory? No, not necessarily. You know, as a you know, special advisor to, to the president of my country, I cannot take you know, any position. But uh, it would be OK for both of them. If Trump gets elected, you know, he'll be you know, much more... Uh, he'll be making progress on North Korean issue while you know, straining our OKS alliance. On the other hand... Joe Biden will be giving more attention to alliance while having a top position in North Korea nuclear issue. Definitely, you know, both are OK, but uh, as long as they are in full consultation with Seoul. OK, well, let's, go, let's move on to North Korea, because Donald Trump, of course, in that huge wave of publicity, uh, tried and failed to get a deal. And lots of observers felt that was very damaging to South Korea, South Korea being relegated as a junior partner in those negotiations. How do you feel the longer-term impact of those negotiations uh, will be felt? Well, not necessarily, because our government you know, favoured you know, Trump's you know, top-down approach in North Korea. And also, you know, as you know, that uh, it was uh, President Moon Jae-in who played... Uh, some kind of facilitating role between President Trump and Chairman Kim Jong-un. Therefore, as long as the U.S. and North Korea get into the, in a fuller discussion toward the denuclearization and peace on the Korean Peninsula, we would welcome. Therefore, we never... But that you know, hasn't happened and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Yeah, since Hanoi in a setback in February 2019, there was no progress, but... We are hoping that if President Trump get elected, then he can pursue top-down approach and come up with a major in a compromise with North Korea. Then that will be fine for us. For us, we want denuclearization and peace on the Korean Peninsula. OK, let's move just to a slightly wider issue now, the impact of coronavirus. How do you think that has shaped relations between uh, the US and the region? Uh, we hope that the U.S. would take a more, much more cooperative approach with its friends and allies in the region. The United States has been taking America first approach, and now it is wrestling, struggling with its own coronavirus problem. But uh, President Moon Jae-in has been proposing that we need some sort of Northeast Asian regional cooperative mechanism for public health and the pandemic. We hope that the U.S. would come up with more, you know, uh, proactive you know, attitude toward the uh, creation of collective goods in dealing with the pandemic. Moon Chung, and thank you so much for your time and giving us your expertise. Thank you. Thank you.